Hi, my name is Sarah, and I am currently a breast cancer survivor. Um, but I want to start from the beginning and tell you my story. I was 27, working part-time as a waitress, going to nursing school full-time, and I was currently practicing for a volleyball tournament for my church. I was very active. I used to run and work out every day before or after school or before or after work. I was also a swimmer. And in August of 2012, one day after playing volleyball and swimming, I was in the shower and I felt something that I had never felt before. As a nursing student, I know to do a self-breast exam every month. And I was always used to doing mine. And I didn't, I didn't feel anything before. So this wasn't something normal. So after I got out of the shower, I laid in bed and did another self-breast exam. And at that time, I still felt something hard. So I asked my sister to feel it, and I asked her if she could feel anything, and she said yes. So I went downstairs and asked my mom if she could feel anything, because my mom is an RN. And she felt it, and she said, yeah, but I don't think you have breast cancer. And looking at it retrospectively, I don't know if it's because she didn't want to believe that I had breast cancer, or if she was just in denial that someone as young as me could get breast cancer. The very next day I called for a doctor's appointment. Um, I knew that something was wrong. So because I was uninsured and only working part-time as a waitress, I didn't have any insurance. I didn't have benefits. So I got seen under the Susan G. Komen grant and when I went to the Cancer and Cancer Therapy and Research Center in San Antonio, they said because of my age and because I didn't have a family history, I didn't have the right kind of breast cancer symptoms, that they were just going to do an ultrasound instead of a mammogram, which the doctor had ordered. When the ultrasound came back, it came back normal, and they sent me on my way. In September, I woke up in excruciating pain, and the lump that I had found had seemed to grow. So I went back to the doctor and I actually was seen by a nurse practitioner. And he wrote the order for a mammogram. And in order for me to get seen, there had to have been significant change in the lump. Um, and he, the, do the nurse practitioner had to rewrite the order. But because he said he didn't find any significant change, he said he wasn't going to rewrite the order. So in October of 2012, um, the local hospital called me and asked if I had a mammogram done, and I told them that I hadn't. So they told me to schedule an appointment with my doctor. So I went back to see the first doctor that I saw, and she asked me, you know, well, what happens if everything comes back normal? What are you going to do then? And honestly, I felt so horrible when she asked me that because it felt like nobody believed me, like I was just crying wolf. And I told her, I started to tear up, and I told her, well, what else can I do? I'm just going to keep watching it. I'm just going to monitor it. So she wrote the order, and once again, I got seen under the combing grant. And once again, the radiologist, the same radiologist said, you know, we're just going to do an ultrasound. You're too young. You don't have a family history. We're not going to do a mammogram. So they did another ultrasound, and then everything came back normal. So she sent me on my way. For the next month, seven months, for the next seven months, I went home every day after work and school crying because nobody would listen to me. Nobody believed me. And in that time, I did a lot of research online, reading books from school, looking up articles, trying to find a connection between young women and breast cancer. And then in March of 2013, a second lump grew. Um, it was the size of a pea. And the first one that had grown, that started out about this small, the size of a shooter marble, 
had grown about to that big, the size of a golf ball. And I told my family and I told my sister, you know, I'm not going to be another statistic. I'm not going to die because nobody will listen to me. So I took matters into my own hands. I went to a completely different doctor, and this doctor took me very seriously. So he wrote the order for a mammogram. Um, at the time, once again, I still was uninsured. So we tried to find funding through different resources here in San Antonio. Um, when I couldn't find any resources, I had to sign up with the local hospitals uh, program that they offer to the community for um, people that are in lower socioeconomic statuses. And through them, I was able to get seen. I went to a facility downtown, and once again, the radiologist said, you know, you're too young, you don't have a family history, so we're just going to do an ultrasound. And I was really upset with that, but I just said, okay, let's do another ultrasound. So they did it. But this time it was different because the radiologist came in and she said, you know, we're going to go ahead and do the mammogram. And right then and there, I knew what was going to happen. I knew what they were going to tell me. So they did a mammogram and something that had never happened before happened during the mammogram. Um, there was discharge. It was bloody and they had to stop the mammogram so that they could actually wipe everything that was coming out from my nipple, something that had never happened in all the time that I had the lumps. So then I went back to the room and the head radiologist came in and she said, after doing your ultrasound and your mammogram, I see some very concerning spots and I need you to come in as soon as possible. So she pushed back her whole day so that I could be her first patient that she saw the very next day. On Wednesday I came in and they did a biopsy in one of each of the tumors and then a spot underneath, a lymph node underneath my arm. And then by Friday, May 17th, 2013, the same radiologist from a different facility, from the very first facility, the same person that had told me, you know, you don't have breast cancer. She was the one who came in to talk to me and my mom, and she told me, yes, you have breast cancer. I cried. Tears filled my eyes, and when I talked to her, I asked her, do you know who I am? And she said, yeah, I think I remember your case. And I told her, you know, I'm not crying because I'm sad because of my diagnosis. I'm crying because I'm frustrated. And this is such a relief to know that I'm not crazy. And that finally, everything that I have known, everybody knows now that what I had been saying is true. And so I told her, you know, after today, I'm not going to cry anymore because I know that it's time for me to fight. And after that, I didn't cry anymore. Um, because it was through a hospital program, I ended up racking up from Tuesday to Friday a $10,000 bill that wasn't going to be covered by anybody. I would have to pay out of pocket. Um, the day that I got my diagnosis, Rosemary Grabo with University Hospital helped me to sign up for the Medicaid for breast cancer and cervical cancer services. So ever since then, my treatment, my medications, ER visits, doctor visits, all of that is covered by Medicaid. But because of that $10,000 bill, I was getting letters to my house. So I decided to team up with the blood donor services and the CareLink program at University Hospital. And I did a blood drive. For each person that would donate blood in my name, it would be a $15 credit towards my $10,000 bill. It took me about one to two months to get 667 people to donate blood and completely take care of my bill. So my balance became zero. 
And so now, as a breast cancer patient and survivor, what I try to do is find other breast cancer patients that were in my similar position without insurance, without any kind of financial help, so that I could set up blood drives so that they can also have their bill become zero. And I also go out into the community and I talk to different schools and businesses, to a variety of people, men and women, children, all ages, because I want to educate people on the changing face of breast cancer and let them know that it is possible for you to be diagnosed with breast cancer uninsured and for you to get through it and to live and to go on with your life. I think that it's important to give these people hope and to give them that knowledge so if they have a lump and they're scared because their doctor dismissed it as nothing to give them that courage to keep fighting for their life because what I tell people is you have one life and one body and what you choose to do with it and what you choose to do on this earth it depends on how hard you will fight because you have to fight for your life if you want to live on this earth. Hi, I'm Wendy Hartley, co-founder of Breast Cancer Answers. You know, not every breast cancer patient benefits from chemotherapy. When I was diagnosed, my doctor thought I would need chemotherapy. But then I learned about the Oncotype DX test, which helps your doctor decide if chemotherapy could benefit you based on the unique biology of your tumor. My test results revealed I had a very low chance of my cancer returning, which meant I didn't need chemotherapy after all. To learn more about the Oncotype DX test, click this button here.